So me and John were just talking about Santa Cruz Island. He goes there a ton. Would you say you probably spent 100 nights there? Yeah, probably uh, in the course of my life, uh, at least 100 nights, I think. Because I started going there when I was probably 10 years old uh, with my dad. Uh, and brothers and stuff on his boat, like our first trawler. Um, I think 1986 is when I started. Wow, that's awesome. Going, going to the islands. Um, and now that I have Valorian, like one of my New Year's resolutions is just spend uh, at least one night every single month. That's calendar awesome. Month out of the islands, and then we've been doing much, much better than that recently. And then, how long does it take you to get there from Ventura? Yeah, so right now my boat's in Ventura Harbor. Like I'm from Santa Barbara and most of my experience is sailing out of Santa Barbara. And I kind of consider myself a Santa Barbarian, but I'm slowly converting to the Ventura ways because uh, Florian's there and Ventura West Marina, which is awesome. And in many ways kind of a better harbor than the Santa Barbara one. And uh, leaving uh, from Ventura Harbor, you know, probably three hours I can make the east end of Santa Cruz. Wow, that's cool. Which is it's fucking dreamy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's even a little shorter to Anna Kappa, like if we want to go ahead Crunchy's Cove or something. Yeah, like lunch, lunch hook. Do, and you were saying, day sales. you were saying you like to stay at Smugglers usually the first night? Yeah, for my current setup, like it's, it was so different leaving from Santa Barbara where I'd kind of always start a trip in the like midpoint of the island on the north side. Mm -hmm. And then you could kind of either go east or west, maybe get around the back, but that was kind of limiting from Santa Barbara. But what's really cool, I find, from well, even from Ventura, is we kind of hit that east end. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of swing around to Smuggler slash Yellow Banks for the first night. Like I can leave in the afternoon. And that's such an easy anchorage. You could do it at nighttime. Like it's just a wide open. That's awesome. Basically, so you can just drop one hook in the dark. There's and it's protected from the westerlies. Yeah. So that northwest prevailing winds, you get a lot of protection uh, in smugglers and yellow banks, especially yellow banks, huge tall cliffs. So the prevailing winds, uh, you get a lot of protection and. Uh, even when it's really high winds, like winter, there's a lot, you know, 20, 30 knot winds, it's pretty common out there. And that's a pretty good spot. It's usually the least windy, the most sunny. That's um, awesome. So that's a great place to kind of start it out. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of saying earlier that what I, why I like to start there is you get a lot of choice for where you go on Santa Cruz from there. So you can then wrap around you know, through Little Scorpion and go west on the north coast, mm -hmm. or you can do that and continue around the backside. And there's a couple of places that I love to go surfing. Yeah, where do you surf out over there? Um, uh, on the on the south side. You know, there's a few spots starting right around Yellow Banks. Oh, cool. Uh, there's actually a wave in Yellow Banks, but then there's a pretty famous wave. Uh, uh, a few miles past that as you head towards um, Coches Prietos oh, and cool. Alberts. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll kind of swing back and forth between Smugglers and Coches. Or yeah. Alberts. I kind of prefer Alberts. Honestly. Alberts is more protected, right? Uh, Alberts is really protected from, uh, again, like northwest wind. Uh -huh. so you have a huge tall cliff. Uh, it gets very dark very early because yeah. it's so tall, it blocks out the sun. Uh, it has its own little beach, like excellent landing there. Right around the corner is much more popular with all the other boaters as Coches Prietos. So I found it very rolly yeah. when I was there. Um, yeah, it can be. It can be a bit rolly. Yeah. Um, but it's light like all the way until sunset. You can actually yeah. see the sunset yeah, there. Yeah, because it's not in the shade. It's a much bigger beach and there's more access. You can actually kind of hike out and bushwhack out of there. And more boats tend to go to Coches, so that in and of itself like, lets me go to Alberts more. Yeah, makes like sense. If I see one boat in Coches, I'll go to Alberts. But if I see 15 boats and one in Alberts, then yeah, it's a no-brainer. Like, right. you gotta do, gotta do Alberts. Yeah, and then do you stay at Forney Cove at all? 
Um, I have only been to Forney's in Florian once, mm -hmm. uh, which is like six months ago when Alana and I did a big circumnavigation of um, nice. Santa Cruz, which is awesome. We spent 10 days just chilling at the island. Hell yeah. Uh, in my youth, on my dad's boats and stuff, I would go to Forney's a few times. I love that place. That's but my favorite. Especially from Ventura. Obviously, it's pretty far. And yeah. if you're a sailboat, it's a big beat. But yeah, that is amazing. I it's love it. It's so spots. beautiful. It's crazy. It's like and for hiking. Another planet. And it's just such a different part of the island, uh, especially the north coast and the northeast. Like the anchorages are super tight, very steep cliffs, and you go in, you have to be bow and stern, and these like little aisles that you anchor in, and sometimes they're crowded. The Fornies just feels so open. The land is much like flatter and more gradual. Yeah. And you can see Santa Rosa and it's just yeah, it's yeah, amazing. It's really cool. And then what's your favorite anchorages on the other side? Uh, on the back side of Santa yeah. Cruz? Oh, no, on the front on side. The front for, side. Uh, yeah. um, still, like, consistently, Fry's is one of my favorites. That's your jam. Uh, I've just had like, so many good experiences there over the years, especially in the wintertime, just being there by myself. Like, I really luck out getting that. Um, it's also really protected from that prevailing northwest wind. Mm. And if you go midweek, like wintertime, Every time you're gonna be there by yourself. That's awesome. And you can tuck in and it has this nice, nice little beach. You can get on the dinghy and go hang out. That's and awesome. Lions. Um, so that's sort of a favorite one. Um, I just recently went back to Prisoners uh, a couple weeks ago. I haven't been uh, there. Which I hadn't been to in years, but that was one of my dad's favorite spots. I think mostly again because it's like pretty, pretty easy to anchor there. It's mm -hmm. big enough where you can just swing on one hook. Oh, that's nice. And it has a lot of protection. It's kind of rare on that island. Yeah, and there's a pier there. Yeah, there's really two types of anchoring on Santa Cruz, and it depends on what time of day it is, what time of mood I'm in. One is where you're really tight because it's crowded, or really tight because just geographically it's... Yeah. Uh, what is that one? Uh, like, Sisters swap. looks really small, but that looks cool, but it looks very tight. Yeah. Yeah, ladies. Potato. Oh, ladies. Was it yeah, ladies? Like, yeah, yeah ladies that's what it is. Ladies. Little ladies. Yeah. It's freaking insane. Yeah, and then potato something. Well, yeah, potato is over by uh, Scorpion. That's another yeah. one. That one looks cool as hell, but it looks very like one boat. Yeah. Bow stern. Yeah, you can do a couple if you're friends, but I've actually, I've never had fluorine in there because... It's very tight. Every time I try, it's either full or we get that north wind or oh, west yeah. swell. Yeah, you'd be in, you'd be miserable. hosed if it... Same with ladies. I haven't anchored this boat in ladies. Yeah, it's kind of asking for trouble with that, with the prevailing winds here. But looks neat. <laughs> yeah. So I like the go-tos, especially if I have a crew on board that's getting seasick yeah, or yeah. something. Like you're looking for protection and an easy hook. Um, and the, the chances, if you're tired, a spot where you can just set your bow anchor yeah. and be good, it's kind of nice. Like when the sun's going down, like having to put the dinghy down, get in and like do a stern anchor, that sometimes can be a hassle. Yeah. Um, and then you said you've had some bad situations at Little Scorpion recently? Yeah, Little Scorpion, a uh, very popular spot, one of the most famous spots. It's amazing because there's all the caves and stuff there. Um, but the, literally the worst night I've ever had aboard any boat was a uh, little scorpion with Alana and I a couple months ago. And uh, the main reason for that was we were kind of following the, the Fagan Bible of dropping a your bow anchor right up against the uh, two rocks there. Yeah. Uh, in like 30 feet of water and then backing out and then setting a stern anchor expecting that prevailing west northwest wind and we did that and then what happened was uh, the wind switched 180 from predicted 180 from the normal winds and we had like 18 knots oh. out of the east um, that came up in the middle of the night. That is, and with a lee shore, really so cool. scary. Yeah, so we were right on the rocks. So, you know, I have a really good stern anchor, big fortress out there, and that thing was, I mean, the rope was singing. Like Ooh. A, it was just tight. Ooh. Good, and there must be decent only, holding at least. Yeah, but. yeah, the holding's pretty good. It gets very deep very quick. That's mm -hmm. another problem with little scorpion when it's uh, crowded, because you have to 
find a spot where your anchor can actually settle in. Um, but we had then, we were kind of pinned against the, the big rocks there being held by our stern anchor. And so uncomfortable with the shape of our boat, you know, these modern kind of wide-ass uh, <laughs> French boats. They cannot take a stern wind or stern swell. It just slaps like yeah, crazy. Yeah, right. And y'all's berth, you sleep in this yeah. aft berth, yeah, right? Yeah, so our master is the aft berth, and it's so loud. It's gnarly like sounding, man. Sleeping in an oil drum, and the <laughs> boat's just going bananas. That sucks. Like, the rig would shake with every wave. Like, we had, like, three feet of wind chop uh, just slapping the stern. Like, it was so loud and so violent. Like, I was actually concerned for the structural integrity of the boat. Yeah, um, that's uh, how it sounds with these types of boats at sea. It's yeah. terrifying yeah. sounding. I'm yeah. sure it's fine, but it, it sounds horrible. It's certainly yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, right. It was and it's just nerve wracking knowing you're on the rocks like that. Yeah. And like even trying to get out, like you couldn't even like let loose your stern line. That's exactly. You know what I mean? Thing. There wasn't. There's no room way. to even escape. If I was a little more conservative in my anchoring, um, and not follow the advice, frankly, in that book and get as close as you can. Yeah. Um, all I would have had to do in the, that weather change was let go of my stern anchor and we'd swing around and we'd be facing the wind and the chop and it'd yeah. be fine, be super happy. Right. Uh, but I couldn't do that because I was pretty sure that we would hit the rocks. Yep. And so I had to, I had to wait for the weather to change. And just like looking at predict wind three in the morning, four in the morning, that five in the morning. That sucks, man. Like, it's so scary. It's so white knuckling. Maybe by 10 a.m., maybe by 11 a.m., it's, it's going to die. And then I can just let go of the hook. Yeah, and I thought about a couple things, um, like trying to ditch the stern anchor or even ditching my bow anchor and then backing up onto the stern anchor. Ooh, fuck that. Oh, day. right. But yeah. I just decided to suffer. Yeah. I and mean, I wasn't worried about us breaking loose at all. I knew, yeah. I knew that we were stuck. It was just incredibly stressful. Incredibly I guess you could have like just slowly let out your stern line and then taken up your bow anchor and escaped that way. But still, it get it would get yeah. hairy. Yeah, it was, and boats like middle of the night. Like I was awake pretty much the entire night coming up on deck. It was a crowded night and boats were dragging, um, people setting only one anchor, uh, and then the east wind. So they had the like, same problem, but with one hook, uh, they're getting blown around. So now those two rocks have become a wee short and they're right on top of them with their stern. Damn. Like, situation that we're trying to avoid. Um, so there's a, like a whole group of dudes on a, uh, like a Catalina 30, Damn. And they had to leave like four in the morning. So I watched them. They tried to reset the anchor two or three times, and then gave up. And were like, "All right, we're out." That sucks. Uh, just took off. Took off for home. It was well, the right decision. Like you can't get. Oh yeah, home. yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the only way. With Lee Shore, it's like, if you can get out, you just get out and fuck it. You know. Yeah. Just go somewhere else, or just drive until the sun comes up, and then find some place to also anchor. Yeah, and some of my. Um, uh, dock mates in Ventura Harbor, they were actually there. Um, and we talked to them, we got back, like, oh, wasn't that the like, worst night ever? I was like, you have no idea. <laughs> awful. Um, so that's a mistake that I'm not looking You'll never make that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I always. It's good to learn lessons that way, though. You I know what I mean? It's with like... Murphy's Law, I think. All the time, it's the only way I sail. Like, I only sail close home, wherever I'm going, that's where the wind's coming from. That is funny. Wherever I anchor, I just know the wind's gonna switch, so I just try to make that part of my program. Split your difference. And leave an out. That's the key, right? Like, what happens if this changes? Like, do I have an out? Yeah. And being pinned is just an absolutely horrible yeah. feeling. You only make that mistake once, hopefully. And then you're like, oh, I'm never backing myself into that corner again. Yeah. If you can help it. I mean, sometimes things change, but. Like leaving yourself options, sea room, and like you, you gotta be able to get out um, 24 hours a day. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for telling us about that. Can we use all the paper towels? Your, your take on Santa Cruz.
EP. No, I can talk a lot about Santa Cruz. I don't like telling people where the surf spot is. I know, I can tell. You're holding that shit back. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Thanks again to all of our patrons. Your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time.